Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log and today I'm going to talk about object pooling to save memory. So this is a particle pool example. There's a ton of particle pooling examples out there because it's a great use case. When you're doing a particle example, obviously you're going to have a ton of objects on the screen just like you can see here. This effect is made by combining a whole bunch of different colored circles and gradually fading them out over time. In fact, there are 198 circles on screen right now on every frame of animation. That's a lot of objects to process. So you want to save as much memory as you can, and one way to do that is by pooling your objects. So what does pooling objects actually mean? So if I stop clicking, and you keep an eye on this pool number right here, when I stop clicking, all the objects are going to come out of my live array, so they're no longer going to be live on the screen, and they're going to go into my pool where they're basically going to be in storage for the next time I need them. So when I start drawing my particles again, they're all going to come out of the pool and go into the live array. When I no longer want them on the live array, and I don't want to see them anymore, they go back into the pool for later use. Now the great thing about this is those objects are already instantiated. In fact, they only get instantiated one time, when I first start out the application. So I'm calling the new operator to create the first 200 particles, and after that, I'm reusing the same particles over and over again. I'm just changing their color, their position, and their size, and their direction. So particle pooling saves memory basically just by avoiding the new operator, and you don't have to instantiate your objects more than once. So let's take a look at what the code actually does. Here is my pool array, and here is my particles array. The particles array is going to be the live uh, value you see right here. The length of particles is going to be reflected by this number right here in live. Pool is going to be where all my objects are stored. The, the length of this is going to be reflected by this number right here. So 200, I'm maxed out at 200. Now the reason I'm maxed out at 200 is because I create two circles per frame of animation and it takes 100 frames of animation for my circles to disappear. So I create two circles on every frame, it takes 100 frames for them to disappear. So I max out at 200 objects. As soon as I hit 200 frames, I start removing two circles. So that's why I, I get uh, clamped right here at 198. So I could change that if I wanted to. In fact, let's go ahead and change it right now. Let's see where, let's go into a class and just change it just so you guys can see that. Let's go up here, a minus equals 0 0.1. Let's do a minus equals 0 0.01. And this will probably really bog down my application because I'm just going to be creating a whole bunch of these and they're going to take a really long time and as you can see there's already a considerable amount of lag going on here so yeah and when I release at some point that's going to happen a thousand frames is going to pass and they're going to start going into my pool and then things will speed up again but let's not wait for that let's just go back to 01 this way we can you know not crash my computer right now and there we go, back to normal. Okay, so let's take a look at what a particle actually is. I'm actually editing inside of the particle class right now, so let's just go up and take a look at it. Here we have the particle class. All it is is a circle, so it has an X and Y center point, and it has a radius, and it also has this RGB string, which is literally just going to be uh, the red, green, and blue color values in a string format. And don't worry about the colors too much. That's not the point of this example program, although it is a cool feature of it. If you want to take a look at the source code, I have it uh, linked in the video description. But the main point is just to create these circles and kill them, take them off the screen and throw them in a pool and then reuse them. So particle is basically just a circle x, y radius. The reset function is going to take care of resetting my circle every time I pop it back on the screen. So when I pull it out of the pool, like I just did, it's going to be reset and reset is going to reset the x position to uh, well, the X and Y position to what I specify here. Uh, so basically, when I call reset, I'm going to be handing in the X and Y position of my mouse pointer or the touch event position on the screen. RGB string is just going to be uh, the color value taken from the background color, and I have a function to gradually change this background color. So whenever I start creating or uh, unpooling my circles, I'm going to hand them the color of the background. So that's what that is. So x gets reset, y gets reset, uh, direction vx and vy, velocity x and velocity y get reset to a random value between uh, 0.5 and negative 
uh, and then A stands for alpha. So alpha is going to be the color value, or I guess it's not really a color value, but it's the transparency value. So an alpha of one is fully opaque. So when they start out, they have an alpha of one and they have a nice solid color. And then over their lifespan, this update position function is going to gradually on every frame subtract 0 0.01 from that original alpha value of one, and they will eventually just fade out into nothing. So when they fade out, there's going to be a condition that says to take them out of the live array or the particles array and put them into the pool array. So let's check that out. Here's my color class. Make sure you check out that link in the description to get the source code link. And where are we looking at right here? If pointer dot down. So here's my game loop right here. Really simple game loop, just perpetuated with request animation frame. I'm just going to go through it because there's not a lot of code. Uh, I'm setting the fill style of the context to white. I can come in here and I can change this. I can make this, uh, I don't know what color this is going to be. It's going to be green and blue. So it's probably going to be, what is that going to be? Let's find out. A really weird looking blue color. So that's just going to set the background color of my canvas there. Save that. And so that's going to set up the background color of the canvas. This is going to change the direction because I'm gradually shifting color based on... Uh, sine and cosine and direction kind of like I did for the platform example with the easing of the platform motion that's what I'm using for that output is just going to be my p element I'm literally changing the style dot color value to equal uh, this color string that I generate that basically is going to be this color back here that's why the color of the text is changing with the background same thing for the background just going to set the color that if pointer dot down now we're getting to the good stuff if I click on the screen I'm going to loop through two times, and I can change this. If I change this to one, and I save, and I refresh, I'm going to have a much thinner particle cloud. And the reason for that is because I'm only creating one particle on every frame instead of two. If I want to create, let's say, three, actually, let's go to five. Why not? Let's just go to five. If I want to create five, it creates a much thicker cloud because I'm creating five particles on every frame of animation and now as you can see I have 495 live particles at any given time and five left over in the pool and when I release all the live particles disappear and they get put into the pool so let's set that back to two real quick get the regular amount of particles back there we go so here's what happens when I'm creating particles if well, actually, we loop through twice because we're going to do this code twice. We're letting particle equal pool.pop. So remember the pool array? That's right here. It's just an empty array when you start out. Right now, the pool array is just an empty array. I haven't actually done anything yet or instantiated any circles. So the pool array is just going to be an empty array. So when I call pool.pop, the particle value is going to be undefined because when you call pop it just pops off the last item in an array if there's no item or there aren't any items in the array pop is just going to return undefined so the first time i click particle is going to be undefined so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new particle i'm going to say particles which is going to be this live array here particles.push new particle i'm handing in pointer.x and y because i want to start the particle out at the uh, pointers x and y position. I'm going to say math.floor math.random for the uh, the radius of the circle. It's going to be a random value between 10 and 10 plus 10, which is 20. So between 10 and 20 is going to be the radius. And I'm going to get an RGB string from my color class, which basically just represents this background color here. So I'm going to get the color of the background when I create my particle. And I'm going to push that new particle into the particles array. So the first time I create each one of my particles, I'm actually going to use the constructor and I'm going to use the new operator to create them. Every time after that, that these particles appear, I'm going to be getting them from the pool. So nothing really has gone to the pool except for two particles so far. And when I release, all the live objects are going to disappear and go into the pool. Now, when I'm creating objects coming out of the pool, I'm no longer getting this condition. I'm no longer having to create them. 
this is going to be an actual particle. It's no longer going to be undefined because the pool has 200 objects in it now. So when I click, it's going to pop the circle off of the end of the pool array. And particle is going to be, uh, it's actually going to be a particle. It's not going to be undefined. So this is going to run. And I'm just going to call particle.reset. It's going to reset the x and y coordinates of the particle. And I'm going to hand in the color of the background to set the particle's color. Then I'm going to push the particle into the particle's array. And that's how it gets into the live array here. And that's the array that gets looped through and drawn to the screen. So now let's see how we remove particles from the live array or the particles array and put them into the pool array. That's probably almost easier to do. So here's where I'm looping through all my particles and drawing them. First thing I do is I set particle or I just let in a, uh, a value named particle equal each particle as I'm looping through the particles array. So this is going to be equal to my particles. Particle.update position. And if we go back to particle.update position, we can see what it does. It just updates the x and y position of the particle based on its velocity x and y. And I subtract 0 0.01 from its alpha value to reduce its transparency on every frame that update position is called. So let's go back down here. We're updating the position and we're subtracting 0 0.01 from the alpha on every frame. That's why the particles gradually disappear like that. And we just go ahead and draw the particle. So if particle dot A, well, first of all, we don't draw the particle unless it's still visible. So we check to see if it's still uh, visible, and this is where we put it in the pool if it's no longer visible. If particle dot a is less than or equal to zero, so basically if the alpha value of the particle is equal to zero and it's no longer visible, we're going to push that particle into the pool array. That's how particles come out of the live array and go into the pool array. Every time they hit an alpha transparency of zero, we're going to push that particle into the pool array, but we're also going to remove it from the particles array. So to remove it from the particles array and simultaneously push it into the pool array, we have this line right here. We're just going to say particles.splice at the index that we have for the current particle because we're looping through. So we know that particle is in the particles array at this index. So we're just going to say remove the particle from the particles array at this index. We're going to remove one of them. And splice returns an array with all the objects that we spliced out. So we're just going to splice one object out. So there's only going to be one object in the array. We're just going to return the array, or rather the value in the array at index of zero. So we're going to splice out the particle. This is going to be the particle. And we're going to push that into the pool array. So every time the alpha goes to zero, we just remove it, we splice it out of the particles array, and we push it into the pool array. And then if it's, uh, well actually let's test this, let's say if A is less than or equal to 0 0.5. So right now we have a very smooth transition and they, they seem to just disappear. If I go ahead and save this and I refresh, now they're just kind of dis, look, look at that, look how fast they disappear. As soon as they hit half transparency, they are going to just be removed and put into the pool. So that doesn't look as cool. It kind of looks cool, but not as cool. So let's go back to the way we had it. So long as the alpha is anything above zero, we're going to go ahead and draw the circle. So we're just going to begin a path. We're going to call arc. We're going to hand in the particle's value. So x, y, radius. We're going to start the arc at zero radians, and we're going to go all the way to math.pi times two radians, which is a full circle in radians. And we're going to set the fill style to the particle color. We're going to fill the circle and we're going to close the path. Then we're going to say pool. We're going to set these values here. We're going to set the inner HTML of the output P element, which is right here. We're just going to set it up to equal pool.length and particles.length for the live right here, just to show how many particles are on screen and how many particles are in the pool at any given time. And that's it. That's the basics of a particle pool. Just to recap real quick, when you are going to create a particle, what you do is you first see if you can get it from the pool by using something like pool.pop or pool.unshift. 
you check to see if that object exists. So if nothing is in the pool, it's not going to exist. If something is in the pool, it is going to exist. If it doesn't exist, go ahead and reset it to some basic values and push it into the live array that you're actually going to draw to the screen. If it does not exist and nothing is in the pool, go ahead and create a new object. Then when you're ready to remove it, whenever say your object is dead or it goes off screen or it fades completely out and you can't see it anymore, then what you're going to do is you're going to test that condition, whatever that may be. You're going to push it into the pool, but first you're going to splice it out of the live array. So that is very simply how to create a particle pool. The, the pooling system will work for any type of object though, and it definitely saves a little bit of memory, which is why it's a common thing to see. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you learned something, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.